Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show. We're at USM Finch Farm where, as you can see, I'm joined by our current right back, John Joe Kenny, and our former right back, Ian Snowden. Great to have you guys with us on the Everton show. I won't embarrass John Joe, I'll start <laughs> with you, Snods, but the boy's done smashing, hasn't he? He has, because he's had some big boots to follow in that right back area, Does He's had uh, <laughs> Gary Stevens, Tony Ebert, uh, Seamus, um, and obviously... Uh, Ian Snowden, but no, he's doing a great job. I, I've I always had confidence in him. I'm, I've watched him for many years now, playing in the 23s and the U teams, and I knew when Seamus got his injury, I, I was quite surprised he'd not got his chance earlier. I really mean that. And uh, as we said, we're not here to embarrass him, but he's now he's now looking a Premier League player. Do you feel a Premier League player now, John Joe? Um, well, you know, I'm playing now a couple of games, and I'm just sort of enjoying it. You know, I like playing games and coming against top players and testing myself. You had to be patient, didn't you, to wait for your chance in the first team? Yeah, I think after the World Cup, I come back into pre-season and you know, I felt I could have had a bit of a sniff and you know, that wasn't it, but I had to be patient, keep working hard and make sure when I got my chance I was ready and fit enough to go. Were you disappointed, John Joe, that you didn't get a chance earlier? Yeah, of course, because you know, mm. that's when I want to play. Obviously, I got disappointed, but you know, we can't let it get to you because then it, you know, becomes, it becomes worse and worse. So I just had to sort of keep positive and keep doing well in training. If you can't come back after a summer break during which you've won the World Cup, Snods, you're not going to come back confident at all. Yeah, it must have been a ma magnificent feeling for them. Uh, watched some of the games and all our boys uh, did really, really well. It's a, it's an honour, privilege to, to win it, but uh, the bread and butter thing is your club football. You want to play and he's no exception. He wanted to be in this team and uh, now he's reaping the, re uh, the reward. Sorry. How much did the help for the other 20s World Cup that you had the likes of Kieran and uh, Dominic Calvert Leon alongside you? Yeah, well, we got on well. I think we were, we were in, with each other every day for about five weeks. So, you know, we had a bit of arguments, but, you know, we had a great time and, and we were all playing and enjoying it. And Kieran was doing well. Dom was scoring, Kieran scoring. And, you know, I was, you know, keeping clean sheets. But, <laughs> yeah, I was enjoying it and we had a great time, yeah, yeah. Were you aware of the swell of support back home? Yeah, you know, you get back on, you know, your social media and you're getting a lot of tweets and you're getting texts from, you know, the gaffer, the, um, the chairman text us and, you know, it's, it's just great, it's great to get and, you know, the lads are made up. That doesn't surprise you, does you, the chairman sending the boys a text? No, not at all. He, he'll watch the international scene as much as he'll watch Everton and uh, especially when our boys are involved in it and there's that many of them as well. And, uh, no, that, that's the chairman, that sums the chairman all up. John Joe, has the fact that David Unsworth knows you so well been really important for you? Yeah, well, I've been with Unzi now for about three or four years and, you know, we've um, got to know each other very well. He knows my game and I know what he likes, so, you know, for him to become the manager, I've just felt a lot more relaxed and he just let me go and be my game and I've enjoyed playing under him. It must be massive that for a young player, to know that the manager has got every faith in you and knows your game inside out. Yeah, it is. Uh, Unzi's done a terrific job with the 23s, there's no question about it. They won it last year. He was usually disappointed the last game of the season against Liverpool when there were a big crowd there, but uh, overall he's done a fantastic job. Um, the boys enjoy pl playing for him, they enjoy working with him every day. Unzi gets Everton Football Club for the, from the girls on the reception, Mo and Mary, to Phil Jagielka, the captain of the club. Unzi treats everybody exactly the same and that's why everybody seems to have a smile on the face at the minute. And of course Unzi played you the last game of the previous season as well, so that little taste must have helped too. Yeah, because I come back off on loan and, you know, Unzi got the job and for the last game with, I think, Joe Royal. So when he, you know, he gave me the nod that I was going to come on and I didn't think I was going to come on that early, to be fair, but, <laughs> you know, when I come on, he just, again, just said, just go and be yourself and when he said that, I just go and enjoy it and really enjoyed that day. How much of the loan spells helped? Yeah, because you become more of a man, you know, yeah. I was living in Oxford and far away from home and you got to sort of stand on your own two feet, so I think from that I've just learned to grow up a little bit more. Does it's a massive thing for these young lads to go out on loan. The, the playing in front of paying public, yeah. uh, they're under pressure from the crowd if they make a mistake, and that's how you grow up quickly on a football field. It's, it's all right playing 23s and, and new team football and getting a pat on the back here and there and the parents are there, but when you're actually going out there and it means business, three, you're playing three points, uh, you're playing for league position and you're, pay, and you're playing for that paying crowd. There's mm. a lot more pressure on it then. Absolutely. How much have you enjoyed playing behind Aaron Lennon? Because he's come back into the side since Sunsy took over and he too has done very well. Yeah, as you say, as has been brilliant. I think at um, the start of the season it was me and him and on a Saturday morning doing a bit of running and trying to keep fit. So, you know, we've come back in and 
his work rate's unbelievable, I think, as a winger. You know, a lot of wingers do sort of cheap, but with Hazard, I know he's going to come back and he's got to help me. And, you know, he's, he's done brilliant in the game and played at the top level. So to have him in front of me, it's just been a lot more easier for me. You need a partner, don't you, to oh, be at right back? Without a doubt. Uh, I remember when I first got to right back, I had uh, Trevor Stephen in front of me, who was unbelievable, fantastic, covering me and letting me go on overlaps, he'd fill in for me. And then when Trevor left, Pat Nevin came, who was a great attacking player, but <laughs> no defence-minded at all. I remember playing against John Barnes with Trevor Stevens. He hardly had a kick. And then we played at Anfield, and Pat Nevin were in front of me. He must have come at me first half 18 times, one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> I ended up grabbing Pat Nevin. I said, get back here and help me, by the way. But it is, it's so important, and Aaron's that kind of player. Mm. He, he'll track back, and, and the work as a pair. And it showed when he tracked Zahar back, uh, must have been 60 yards. Got a magnificent round of applause from our away fans. That's just hard work and helping your teammates. And I suppose you can attack with more confidence as well, knowing that somebody's there to, to watch you back. Yeah, well, that's how it works. You know, if I go forward, I know Az is there for me to fill in and sit vice versa, really. So I like Az to go forward a bit more than me because you know, that's his, that's his game, in it. Mm. So, but yeah, as I say, as I'm 1v1 with people, I know Az is there to sort of help me out. Well, let's keep on track with the right-back theme here on this week's Everton Show. Let's hear now from Cuco Martina. He answers our questions that always begin, my first. I remember that um, watching Brazil was, I think, the World Cup. Yeah. They won the World Cup, I think. Yeah, I would say, yeah. With uh, all the great players, of course. Spain. Loret Lamar. Family or friends? Family. I was young. Ronaldo, the real, real Ronaldo. I think it was uh, Bob Marley. I don't know how to say it, um, you know, to to uh, give the people the newspaper, how do you say that? Oh, paper boy. Paper boy. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, Southampton, it's horrible. Yeah. Um, was uh, like a Dutch song. Right. Did it go down well? Yeah, a little yeah. bit. I think there was a moment that I came in a week, I think, four times late. Right, at school or...? Uh... No, uh, that was uh, at uh, Rosendark. It's not Southampton at St Mary's at the weekend and the incentive is there for the Toffees. If we beat Southampton, we go above them and we've, we've got to start thinking like that, haven't we? We've got to start moving up the table. Yeah, we have. We, we got an important win against Watford. A uh, bit of luck in the end. Uh, former player Tom Cleverley missed the penalty, but then went to Crystal Palace, who are not bottom of the table material. Mm. They will improve uh, the league position over the next few months and, and got a 2-2 draw so that's positive results and there's nothing that really worries me about Southampton I watched them uh, the highlights against Liverpool who absolutely destroyed them to be honest could have been a lot more so I don't fear Southampton all right they're at home and every they're all difficult games let's not get away from that but I think the boys will have got a little bit of confidence confidence from the last two performances and I think they can go and get a result down at St Mary's the night against Watford was amazing. I'm sure it's one of the most amazing nights of your young career so far. And it's not right. Did the boys take immediate confidence from that moving on to the next game against Palace? Yeah, I think we had to really. I think, you know, we were 2 0 down, was it? And we got it back to win 3 2. I think it just shows the team spirit. And, you know, again with Unzi, we wouldn't let the lads' um, heads go down. And, you know, it just shows by getting back to getting the 2 2, then getting the last minute pen. And, you know, the lads made up with it, yeah. Fans were fantastic, weren't they, at Goodison? Yeah, it was one of the best nights I've, um, I've had at Goodison, to be honest with you. Yeah, playing there and, you know, I've always wanted to play in them type of nights and, you know, I was made up to play in that night and it was a great experience for me. You're getting recognised more and more about the city these days, John, just since you've been in the first team frame. Yeah, you get the odd water too, but I just try and stay at home a lot and just focus <laughs> on the games because, you know, they're coming thick and fast and, you know, it's a Sunday, Thursday now, most days, so 
just need to keep fresh and prepare for the next game. And that's just about it for part one of this week's Everton Show. My thanks to John Joe Kenny for joining us in part two. Snodds and I will be joined by our under-18s coach Paul Tate and we'll also hear from Jordan Pickford. <laughs>Welcome back to part two. Ian Snowden and I are joined by Paul Tate, our under-18s coach here at USM Finch Farm. And Paul, you join us with the under-18s in a really rich vein of form. You must be thrilled with the way the boys are performing. Yeah, really happy with the, the form at the moment. Um, a lot of work that's been going on um, throughout the week in the coaching sessions is, is uh, paying off on match days at the moment. Everybody gets the goodison and says, how did the 18s get on? Straight away, yeah, it's, it's important for any age. Anybody that any team that wears that Everton crest, everybody wants to know about and how well they're doing. Uh, I just enjoy that most of the coaches that are at Everton belong at Everton. They want at Everton to win. Uh, we've got Franny Jeffers, we've got John Ebrill, we've got John Doolan, who's obviously moved on. Tatey, uh, I remember him being an apprentice when I were a pro, and I remember giving him a bit of stick <laughs> as well. But uh, no, it's, it's so important that we've got. Everton represented as coaches to, sh to show them youngsters the right way. And a great win against Newcastle where the boys left it late but showed the character to keep going until they got that winning goal. Yeah, that was the pleasing thing. Um, we dominated the first half but we didn't quite score enough goals um, and Newcastle scored a good goal against us. And it was a tough tough game second half. Newcastle are uh, struggling at the bottom but they really put a good performance in for Dave Watson who, who was the manager yeah. there and uh, Kevin Richardson who was his assistant. Yeah. So they had them fired up because obviously they were playing against <laughs> us. Um, but the lads kept going and kept trying to play the way that we were we were we were playing in the first half, and, and they got the goal at the end, which was really pleasing. Anthony Gordon knows where the back of the net is. Doesn't he? Yes, he does. He's he's um, he's got 11 league goals this season, so he's doing really well. He plays uh, just off the front. He's, he's not a, a number nine. Uh, although he can play up there because he's got pace, he can run in behind as well as come and get at the feet. Um, and he knows where the goal is, obviously. It is all about development at that age, Snods, but mm. we do like to see Everton teams win, and game management and winning football matches is surely all part and parcel of that development. Yeah, it is, because in the long run, what you're striving for is to get into that first team, whether it may be starting at under-16, under-18 level, then you progress to uh, the under-23 level, and then you want to... So, yeah, it's important to know how Everton want to play at, at that age group, and, uh, and as I say, it's important that... Um, the players know the Everton way and every what is the Everton way? The Everton way is determination, work hard, put a shift in and win football games and it's as easy as that. And confidence I suppose is just as vital at your age group as it is with the first team. John Joe was telling us in part one of this week's programme just how confidence is on the up with the first team and it must be running through the veins of your boys at the moment. It is, it's once they get that momentum of a few wins under their belt and uh, Snodds will tell you, you know, mind you, I can't remember the last time he, he was in the team that <laughs> one, but <laughs> yeah, once you get that momentum under the belt, they, uh, you know, it, it flows through them and uh, everything seems easy to them when they've got the confidence. Well, one Everton player who must be full of confidence himself at the moment in the senior squad is, of course, Jordan Pickford, who recently made his England debut at Wembley. We caught up with Jordan earlier this week. With his being in, in the system since 16 through 21s, it was nice to finally have the path pathway to get to the seniors and finally got the opportunity and um, had a good game so please. Does it give you more confidence being able to call yourself an England player? No I think I think I need to kick on from that I think only having one cap uh, is not enough I think I need to try and try and get a, as many caps as I can and that's when you say I've, I've made it for England but one cap uh, it's nice and you just you've got to keep working working hard for Everton then hopefully get the rewards for England. You kept a clean sheet there on your England debut, you kept a clean sheet on your Everton debut as well, and it's been a fine start for you personally for the club, hasn't it? Yeah, uh, it's been good, it's been a good, good change of life for me, coming down here, moving away from family and stuff. Uh, so me and my girlfriend came down and it's been great, different different life, um, but really thriving on it really and really enjoying myself here at the moment. Uh, results haven't been ideal, but the last two results in the Prem has been Positive, four points from six, and we, we take momentum into the next game for that. Have you had any standout moments so far? I think off the top of our head, there was a great save from Shakiri on the first day, the penalty saving split. There's been a few. Yeah, um, a win, a clean sheet. That's what makes me happy, really. Um, Long's getting over that line with three points, really. Um, but like I say, just got to keep performing week in, week out and being consistent. 
Paul, let's speak a little bit more about your football career, your journey from being an Everton apprentice to being an Everton coach. When did you first come to Everton? Because obviously, from the accent, you're a North East boy. Yeah, um, I, I played for Wolves End Boys Club in the North East, which is a well-known boys club up there. And um, I was at Newcastle at the time as a schoolboy, and Everton approached me to say if I wanted to come on trial. That was when I was 14. Um, I've basically been here ever since. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't get rid of me. <laughs> um, I'd done a scholarship, which was a YTS scheme then. Uh, moved down at, at 16. And um, played till I was 19. Got released at 19 off Mike Walker because I wasn't big or strong enough to, to be in, in and around his first team at the time. Thankfully, we've moved on in youth development. Um, we wouldn't release any boys on, on that premise <laughs> now. Um, and then had to drop down the divisions and, and try and work my way back into professional football. I felt I, I could still do a job in the pro game. Um, but I took a step back into non-league and then luckily uh, Dario Grawley took a chance on us at, at Crewe and I was quickly playing championship football. And your desire is probably summed up by the fact that you moved away from, from the comforts of your, your own region in the North East, the family home, to come down to Merseyside when you were a, a very young boy. That must have been a big step. Yeah, I felt I needed, even then, I, I felt I needed to come away from the environment I was in and the, the environment that was uh, in place at Everton at the time, I felt would give us a really good chance of being a player. Um, and luckily it did, it worked out in the end. When did you start thinking about coaching? When did you start to think about your post-playing career? Very early. Once, really? I, once I dropped out at 21 from Wigan, got a free transfer from Wigan, so I'd had two free transfers in three years. So I'm thinking, well, you know, what am I going to do next? And I, I started a coaching school up in McGull. Um, so that was my first uh, taste of coaching. That was at 21, albeit with amateur players, you know. Everybody at the academy must be delighted with the, the progress made by our part one guest, John Joe Kennedy, mm. the likes of Tom Davis as well, and of course, Benny Beningamy. Yeah, it's great that I, I keep emphasising, Daz, that they're getting good coaching and they are here. Um, there's many good players that are still that are coaching these young boys and they're shown the right way. They're growing up with respect. Um, they, they treat the staff around the place very well and I think that's so important to keep the feet on the ground. Tom Davis has become a superstar last season with the goal against Man City and he could have gone, look at me. But he ain't, he's, he's a grounded lad, John Joe's a grounded lad. And that's the experience that they're getting early doors from being coached at a young age. But it's not to see in the culture that we, we have here. It's, uh, it's almost ingrained in the boys from a young age, um, not to get above their station. And you know, the lads you mentioned there, thinking back to when they were young, young, young uh, players coming through, still are young players, but even the age 14, 15, they were good lads, good mm. people. Mm. Mm. And their parents were fantastic people as well, who supported them all the way through. You, you know? must really enjoy watching Benny Beningaby play for the first team, a boy you know really, really well. Fantastic. I mean, that, that's the, one of the best parts of the job mm. of being a youth coach, isn't it? When they, they run out of Goodison, or it, it's, it's fantastic to see them playing. And, um, you know, again, mentioning their parents, I sit by their parents a lot, mm. and, and, you know, to see them. Um, I remember Tom Davies's mum and dad when he scored the goal against Man City. Mm. I just sat a few <laughs> seats along from them, and it was just an unbelievable uh, feeling, you know. Let's just see some goal action now from another team down here at uh, USM Finch Farm. So it's Everton ladies who mm. have stuttered a little bit in WSL 1, understandably, they got promoted last season, but they're doing well in the Continental Cup and they beat Oxford United 4-0. Yeah, great result for them, they're doing well in the Cup, uh, they really are. The league's been a bit difficult, as you said, they got promotion, Daz, and uh, there's some good good teams in that uh, in that top league, in the in the ladies' league, so... Uh, it comes back to confidence again, Yeah, it does, it? It's, <laughs> throughout the club at the minute, confidence Let's hope it grows it everywhere with the ladies as well. Uh, I've, I've talked to a couple of the girls at, uh, at lunch times. They're so enjoying the full-time training here. Mm. And they, they will get better. There's no question about it. Let's hope that the, the uh, league performances improve, the results improve, and let them take that cup football into, into the league. Talking of cup football, there's a big FA Youth Cup tie at Goodison Park coming up against Ipswich Town. Looking forward to that one? Yeah, really looking forward to it. Yeah, we're uh, starting the, the preparation now, so we we'll use use the, the next couple of league games as preparation for the youth cup. Um, How much of a priority is the FA Youth Cup? I think over the years we haven't um, taken it as a massive priority that we win it mm. because we're always looking at the next step. The job is not to produce teams at the academy, it's to produce players for the mm. first team, the lads that you've just been talking about. So mm -hmm. that's always the main focus. Um, 
but you try and telling them uh, under 18 lads in the youth club that we don't want to win mm. it you know it, it's just not going to happen so we go into the, the tournament we want to win the tournament without a shadow of a doubt we all want to win it does the competition that, I, you've both played I, in, isn't it? Yeah. i was i was at doncaster me and we drew newcastle up at newcastle and wow it's great the fau cup you can't wait it's as big as the fa cup <laughs> for the first team players you're wanting to know and we've drawn it switching it will be at goodison park so them lads will be nervous going out onto goodison park and playing but it's up to him and uh, his other coaching staff to just relax them and say look all right it's at goodison park Let's just go out and play his normal game, go out and enjoy it, but most importantly, go out and win the game and get into the next round. How easy will that be? Play the game, not the occasion, as they say. Yeah, it sounds easy, <laughs> but um, it isn't when you're 16 or 17 and you step out at Goodison. But, uh, we're trying to get a training session there before, before we go out and play. Um, I'll have to speak to the ground staff about that. <laughs> Good luck that You've no way. chance that with Bob, by the way. That might prove, prove tricky with Bob Lennon, <laughs> yeah. as we know. We wish the boys well. It's Everton versus Ipswich Town in the FA Youth Cup at Goodison Park. We'd love to see as many toffees at Goodison Park as possible to cheer the lads on. And that's just about it for this week's programme. My thanks to Ian Snowden and to our under-18s coach, Paul Tate. Do join us again in seven days' time for another Everton show. You've been watching the Everton show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe and that way you can catch every single future episode.